morning, everybody. Do please sit down. A very warm welcome to you all, and if there are any of you who are here for the first time, who are returning after a long stay away, do please make our, yourselves known to the stewards at the back of the church after the service. And please all stay for some coffee and tea after the service, um, but do remember the social distancing aspect of it, please. It's a great pleasure and a privilege to welcome to Trinity this morning the chair of the, Methodist, the London Methodist District, the Reverend Nigel Cowgill, who I probably think he's our bishop at any rate. So, N Nigel, we welcome you with open arms and we look forward to what you're saying, going to say to us as the service progresses. And in that context, there are just, um, in view of the absence on holiday of our own minister, Dave, um, the next couple of Sundays, I wanted to just alert you to the preachers who are going to be coming um, on the 16th. It's going to be, um, I can't think of that, Philip Brooks, Reverend Philip Brooks, who is, a, is an official in central URC. And then the following week, on the 23rd, it's the moderator of the southern Pro province who is coming, uh, the Re Reverend Bridget Banks. So we have three significant Sundays to look forward to. So I haven't any other notices, so thank you very much, Nigel. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Richard, for that welcome. I'm not sure everybody would agree that I was uh, as influential as a bishop, uh, but thank you indeed for that welcome. As we come to worship God on this day, let's spend a moment just in the quiet before we sing our first hymn. And so, friends, we stand and sing hymn number 39, Angel Voices Ever Singing.
please be seated. And so we come before God for a short time of prayer of adoration and then some silence and then a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you in this place this day with all our heart and mind and strength. For you indeed are alone our God. We join with hosts of heaven as we worship. For you alone are worthy of adoration from every mouth. And every tongue shall sing your praises. You create the earth by your power. You save the human race in your mercy to renew us and it through your grace. To you, loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you all glory, honor, and praise now and forever. And so in the silence, we bring our confessions to God. Loving God, we have sinned against you in what we have thought said and done. Forgive us when we have not loved you with our whole heart and when we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We come now and say we are truly sorry and to turn away from what is wrong. Forgive us for the sake of your Son. For Christ came into the world to save sinners. Hear then his gracious word. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, and ever. Amen. Before the children go out and before we sing our next hymn, I'm just wondering if there's a, is there, if there's a few of you who would like to come out to the front. If the children won't, don't want to come out the front, uh, I, I'm more than happy if any adult wants to come out to the front. <laughs> They're coming. Come in. Do you want to come out? It, it, it'll, I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> Anybody else? Any adults want to come out? I'll make it your worthwhile as well. So this morning, we're just going to ask you a question. Okay. Have you got anything which you want to thank God for and celebrate this morning. You can use my microphone, is that all right? Yeah, you can use anybody. No, so you've all come to church. Oh, you have, okay, go on. That we all have our daily lives and we all are happy and not sad. That we all, did you all hear that? Yeah, even those at the back, yeah? We all have our daily lives and we're, now then, 
I brought something special as well. Okay, because that was something to celebrate, wasn't it? So here we go. So if they give me something which they want to celebrate God's love for this morning, guess what they get? A celebration. Now, I just have to make sure. See, all the adults now are going to come running out, aren't they? I can see that happening. There we go. Anybody else? Oh. <laughs> there, oh, there's one in. Oh, sorry. We, oh, I thought you were putting your hand up. <laughs> That you have everybody there to love you and you've got friends and family there. Say that again. Um, that you've got friends and family there for you, that you, they can like, support you. Yeah, so friends and family in the church, yeah, to support you. Is that something to celebrate? Yeah, anybody else? Is people nodding in the congregation as well? Yeah, okay. Hello, are you all right? Yeah. Don't look too scared, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. The deal is you've got to say you've got something to celebrate before you get the sweet. Okay, it's not, it's not an all for all, you know, this. this. Okay, um, I passed the first round of my exam. Oh, passed the first round of your exam. What was it? What was your exam? 11 plus. The 11 plus. I think that is a round of applause, isn't it? <laughs> I think you could have two for that. Because I, I would have never passed 11 plus these days. Anybody else? You had a great breakfast. You had a great breakfast. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're kind of scraping the barrel a bit here, aren't we? <laughs> what, did, what did you have for breakfast? Mm, egg. Egg. So you got to cook breakfast before you came to church. Oh, well, that's very good. Where, where's, who have you come with? Just <laughs> cook breakfast before she came to church. That's very good, isn't it? Anybody else have a cup breakfast before they came to church? Oh, just one lady over there. There we go. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Do you, is there anything you want to just say thank you for? Shall we, shall we say thank you for her giggling and her smile? Yeah, yeah, there we go. And, and you, young man, you're very, you sat there very very kind of like quiet and tall. Is there anything you want to say thank you for? Um, for people getting better. For people getting better. There we go. Yeah, we definitely want to do that, don't we? Is he called Matthew? Yes. Well done. Is your brother? Is he bro Yeah. Is that your sister? Yeah, well, good on you. Okay, okay, so you see those big people out there? Okay, they're wanting to go home by half past 11. Okay, help me out here. <laughs> you just want a sweet, don't you? Okay, okay, anybody? Oh, you thought something. Good health and life. Good health and life? Okay, you don't want one. You do want one, but there's not the right one. You do? Okay, okay. We'll be, we might be a while, folks. Are you happy with that one? Are you sure? You don't want to go put it back and... No, okay. Have you been? No. Do you, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'll just give you one because you've been polite and waited till the last. Friends, anybody else want one? I'll, I'll leave them here just in case you get bored in the middle of the service. No, no. We, we all come to church and to worship uh, to celebrate God's love for us, don't we? That's the only reason we're here, to celebrate God's love for us, to meet in a community. And when we do that, we know that actually each and every one of us is special to God and to the loving Christ. And sometimes, as we've heard from Matthew, hello Matthew, as we've heard from Matthew, sometimes that's not always easy because we, we are human and we're, we get ill and we're not well and things like that. But actually when we come together and worship as a community, we know that we can support each other in prayer 
because we have that assurance that Jesus Christ loves us. And that is something to celebrate this morning, isn't it? Sure. Okay. So we're going to sing a hymn, which may be, you're going to go for your classes in a minute. Okay. We're going to sing a hymn, which may be slightly unfamiliar to some of you, uh, but our organist is going to play the verse and the chorus through first. Uh, but it talks about how we're all called into God's kingdom to celebrate his love to us. And then we'll say a prayer with our young people and children before they go to off to their classes. So let's sing the call here, the call of the kingdom. And the choir apparently have rehearsed it, so they're going to give it a bit of welly. <laughs> So let's remain standing as we pray with our children and young people. Loving and gracious God, we give thanks for the children and young people of this place, for their faith and their knowledge in you. We ask that you will bless them as they go to their classes. The Lord be with you. So our anthem this morning is a prayer of Richard of Chichester.
then verse 4 up to 7. These are the words of the letters that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders from Jerusalem um, among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and to the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. And then from verse 4, Thus says the Lord of the host, the God of Israel, to all the exiles, whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build a house and live in them, plant garden and eat what they produce, take wives and sons and daughters, that wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there, do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its, on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Our second reading is taken from Luke. Luke chapter 17, from verse 11 up to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the regions between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered at the village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, Say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that, he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten met clean, but the others nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your face has made you well. Thanks to be. Thank you. As we prepare to explore God's word, we sing Jesus comes with all his grace, number 326. Thank mm -hmm. you.
seated. And so let us pray. Loving and gracious God, may the written word and the spoken word be the living word in our lives this day. In the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, I don't know about you, but when you heard that gospel reading from Luke's gospel, it is full of drama. And I would like to suggest that the drama is a confirmation about strength of fear. Here we have ten souls walking the distance away from the main road as they were bound to do so by the law because simply of their condition. These people were born with real hopes, real dreams. They once walked with a purpose, meaning with their peers. But now, due to an accident of being in some place or with other people, they contracted this disease. Now, over the last few years, many of us would have known what that was like. However, for these ten people, their lives were over. Friends, leprosy, and some of you may remember and support what we call the leprosy mission, but leprosy was, in those days of Jesus, the most feared disease, as it removed a person from living within their community. These were real people whose health and hopes made them beg on the fringes. No cure awaited them, and the fear that they had was effectively preceding them on a death march around civilization. In this gospel reading today, with this 10 people with leprosy calling out to Jesus, 10 people isolated from their families they once knew, 10 people who lived in pain both their physical condition and the pain of exclusion from the world. I wonder just for a moment how we would feel if that was us. Exhausted and friendless. And so the only thing that they can do is when they see Jesus, because of his renowned ministry of healing and helping and doing miracles, changing water into wine, well, he clearly wasn't a Methodist, was he, our Jesus? But all they could do was call out to Jesus. I think one thing that makes this story unusual is that these ten lepers were travelling with a Samaritan. And not only is this man a leper, but he's outside the circle of acceptability. Because he was born to be someone considered not fully human. His religious practice was different. His race set him apart. He is a foreigner, an immigrant in this country. He was someone who was born with different characteristics that make him impure, even if he didn't have leprosy. So in many ways, he's got the double whammy. I wonder, friends, maybe you can remember what it was like to discover that you didn't have 
that same access to a rightful place at God's table. And of course, as a church, we don't like to think that nobody has, doesn't have access to God's table. But maybe, just maybe, it's because of your gender you don't get access to God's table. Maybe it's because of your race you don't get access to God's table. Maybe it's because of your sexual orientation you don't get access to God's table. Perhaps you can remember how it felt to begin to discover at a very early age of how people see you. We walked about with a sense of entitlement, thinking that life was just an uphill and you were unequal or even dangerous to walk amongst the status quo and the privilege. And of course, that might be a hard thing to hear on a glorious Sunday morning in a church, but it's all here in Luke's Gospel in this passage. And in some senses, this would be the walk not unlike the Samaritan. And so on this particular day, those ten people with leprosy came before Jesus to form their respectable distance, walking that extremely long march along the main road between Galilee and Jerusalem. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they walked, they couldn't help but see that they'd been made clean, healed. If you can imagine no further need to be regulated to the outside, there is nothing keeping them from taking up their lives again. They'd been to see the priest, and on their way, they'd been healed. But perhaps these former leprous lepers got themselves back into a respectable looking order and from where Jesus stood they set out for Jerusalem to be made ritually clean to be accepted back into their communities it sounds like a good news story really doesn't it from the gospel all they had to do was to go back and present themselves to the priest. Well, it does bring up the question about authority and power that priest might have or not, but that's perhaps for another day. But there's this one. He was on his own, healed from leprosy, but not from the effects of prejudice. Remember, he was a Samaritan, that double whammy of being excluded. Where would he go? And without the other nine, who could he turn to? Because the other nine, all this time, had been part of his close-knit community. And he was yet again being excluded from that community. And of course, the story tells us that one of them he saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Friends, have you ever looked at someone, heard them speak, or perhaps seen them involved selflessly in some community? or family healing situation and recognize that you were in the presence of someone who was truly 
authentic. Some voice, some instinct caused this man to turn back because he knew that there at the feet of this man, this Jesus, he was in the presence of the authentic. Friends, that's the good news in this passage, that he was in the presence of the authentic. It was the one outsider who perhaps because of circumstances forced him to question more, to be more discerning, turned back and found himself in the authentic presence that he could know. And it was there that Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. It was once said, gratitude is a sign of noble souls. But friends, all this noble soul needed and all he has is the authentic Jesus. All he has is Jesus. He doesn't have a home time, a supportive community. He's on the outside. Some of you, I should imagine, would have heard of Karl Barth, the great theologian. And he said the basic human response to God is gratitude. Not fear and trembling, not guilt and dread, but thanksgiving gratefulness. To have faith is to live faith. And to live faith is to give thanks. Living into the real life of gratitude is to live a life of faith. Friends, we could just leave it there. I think Karl Barth sums it up. But this was a leper made whole who returned in gratitude. Even when so many settings he was made the other. And of course we could talk today about how any number of people might relate to this Samaritan. Maybe in our own lives. Maybe in the lives of those that we care and love for. Maybe within our communities. Maybe for those who have been recipients of your harvest in the food bank. The people outside the lines. In this ever-ending political season, the shun Samaritan shows up over and over again. And of course, we may be able to find this foreigner characterized as the refugee from Ukraine or Syria, of perhaps who we should be wary, apparently. He could be the young African who simply goes out to the store and gets shot and killed because of the colour of his skin. And whose parents would never hold him again. Because racism still lies relentlessly unexamined beneath covers of privilege. He might be the old person who is so frightened to go out on the streets in their communities 
because of the fear that has been whipped up around those communities. He might be the outside of an acceptable faith. He doesn't worship like we do. He doesn't do things right and proper. He might be hearing of a ban, temporary or otherwise, on people like him. He could be one of the LGTB community who live on the streets because they have fled or been kicked out of their homes. But friends, you'll notice I've used the word he. But let's not be mistaken. Of course, it could be he or her. Like the people stuck with leprosy in this encounter from this gospel with Jesus. Friends, no one should have to dwell in fear on the outskirts of society. And as people of God, as Christ's disciples, summoned to live a life of discipleship, we need to be at the forefront of making sure that everybody gets a space at that table. For us as discipleship people, how do we turn our fear of anger and sadness into concrete practices for faith? What does it feel like for us to be authentic, authentic people of God? Someone once said, when you ever draw a line in the sand to exclude others, we find Jesus is always standing with those on the other side of the line. Like the Samaritan, we may have found ourselves visiting or perhaps growing up in communities or churches or groups that don't welcome us because of who we are. We go back to the Gospels where it says we should shake the feet of our dust of those who don't welcome us. Walk back down that road to find the source of what truly is authentic. For friends, this passage in the Gospel of Luke is not just about the celebration of 10 people being healed. It is a story of justice and peace. It is the presence of love and acceptance. It is about the spirit of hospitality and welcome given to the Samaritan. For us, it is the same. Whoever that undocumented visitor might be, whoever is not included at the table. Friends, for where this is not found in the people who call themselves the people of God, then that's when Jesus has left the building. For all the Samaritan had was Jesus. And Jesus tells the Samaritan that it is his own faith that made him whole. Our own faith, as we understand it, friends, how does it prove itself in its own authenticity? Does it enrich our lives and lives that make us more open, authentic and simple? Whoever we are, wherever we are, imperfect, often broken, often hurting, 
perhaps caught up in our own net of dishonesties and resentments. Yet it is our faith somehow that is capable of showing ourselves in the soaring moments of authenticity, desiring to be loving and strong, exactly as God created us to be. Here, in this moment, in this place, is our own faith as we understand it. And as we walk to the places of our hearts where we find that authenticity shining before us, yes, it is our own faith that makes us whole in spite of who we are, standing on dissolving boundaries and ready to move across the limits of what we were into what God requires us to be. For it is that grace that is a gift. So friends, this day, like the Samaritan, let's remember to turn and give thanks. Amen. So we sing of God's love, who made us rich in our, divide, our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still in unity. 689. <laughs>
Please be seated as we come before God with our prayers of intercession. I invite you to respond when I say, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, most gracious and most holy, grant us the help of your Spirit as we pray for the Church and the world. We pray for the Church in every land, giving thanks that we belong to a world church. We pray for churches and worshipping communities who are unable to worship in freedom. We pray for this church and its community for its mission activities, for how it becomes a beacon of witness in the middle of this town. Pray for churches within this circuit for lay and ordained leaders. We pray for other local churches within this area, giving thanks particular for our ecumenical relationships in Sutton. <coughs> we pray that we may worship and serve you with reverence and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the peoples of the world, praying for countries where war and persecution, discrimination and prejudice are part of everyday norm. Continue to pray for the people of Pakistan, Ukraine, and many other places that don't touch the headline news. We pray for the leaders of nations, for our own government, and those in opposition. We pray for local members of parliament in this area of London and local councillors. That all may work together for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious and loving and healing God, we pray for those who are ill or distressed. Remembering members of this community who are in hospital, who are housebound, or in nursing and residential care. And as we approach Mental Health Care Day tomorrow, we remember those who are unable to cope with another day like yesterday.
We pray for the lonely and the bereaved. Particularly remembering the families and friends of those who died yesterday in Ireland. And in your mercy, gracious God, we pray for those in other, in other need or trouble that we have promised to pray for this day so that they may be comforted and sustained by your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so, Father, remember before you all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ, remembering those whom we love but no longer see. We pray that we too may lead faithful and godly lives in this world and so to share with all your saints in everlasting joy. We bring these prayers spoken and the ones of our hearts this day through the living Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now receive our offering and a prayer. Loving and gracious God, we bring these gifts on this plate. We also bring the gifts which have been given in other ways this day. We ask that you will use them and us to build your kingdom where all are welcome at the table. In the name of Christ, amen. We remain standing as we sing our concluding hymn for this morning's worship, 503, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling.
The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you and those whom you love and those who you ought to love this day, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.